Kick the tires and light the fires. We're playing Aerotech. At least that's what what? There's a there's a battle tech? You need air support. Air support, what's that? I'm playing up a grudge match as I want to win the air war, way over committing on it, but thankfully I pull double straws and get to play two 5,000 point lists with that awesome vanquisher, while my buddy Memphis Mark holds up the ground with me. Contesting the skies today is two lightnings from the Tarians, along with quite a few support units to help out. A newcomer to the group, Cracker, brings in a thug, Banshee, and Wasp. And we got two custom units coming from Fatbird. Heavy laser versions that are actually really nice. Now unlike the last game where we had a plan, but the plan was actually really, really bad, this one we're actually going to play it a little bit closer to ear, letting the Cicada try to act as a diversionary element and then let the heavier units group together. We're going to move forward fast with the lighter Word of Blake units and try to get behind whatever element that we might be able to find and deposit the infantry in a section that is actually going to make them useful. This is all going to be predicated on winning the air war quickly so that we can bring in our overwhelming firepower that we have flying around on the skies to take advantage of whatever shots that they might be able to get. And as we do so, the Word of Blake actually groups up. We are not going to spread out too much. We're holding the center, and as we do, we're going to only split up as we start approaching the middle of the board. The only real difference here is that, again, the Preda and the Malak are going to open up their distance pretty quickly. Already on the right side of the board, you can see the coalition forces are somewhat grouped up as the clan forces are pairing off their madcats, which uh, have a really interesting combination of, I do believe, ATM-9s, two heavy large lasers, and two ER mediums. It's very simple, very sweet, and gets right to the point. And not much happens in the early turn. We don't have much shots, and unfortunately, this leads over to the air war, which and like the ground game becomes really intense very fast and unfortunately it dragged down the game just a little bit as Deffler and I were trying to compute that game while everyone else kind of just twiddled their thumbs a little. It's a little disappointing. It didn't take that long to do but it's still kind of rude. And as we do, the Sadlitzes move on just as fast as they can. They were synced because he won the initiative, so they ended up jinking the entire time. Well, the Atarians jinked as well because they didn't know what they were going to be facing. But nonetheless, the Shivas slow up, take long-range shots, pummel them, ending up giving them several crits right through the nose, causing a couple control rolls, but it does nothing meaningful. They brush off the damage like it was nothing. The opening shots are connect, but they're... They're ineffective. Malak again sprints forward. Again, we're following with the whole uh, strategy that we're going to be moving the mediums and lights up forward. We're going to harry behind them. They respond by moving the Drillson, and they start moving the Mad Cats over to counter on our side of that large rocky outcroping, the side that's closer to the camera, while the heavier units, the ones run by Cracker, are actually holding up the wooded hill area up, up behind it. We're already seeing a situation and we end up sinking the initiative just as far as we can so that we can keep the Vanquisher far back in the track because whichever way he goes, if he decides to interact with Cracker's units, then that's where he's going to be for the rest of the game. If he decides to interact with the clan units, then that's where he's going to be for the rest of the game. And as we sink him far back, we realize which way they're going, which way they're deploying, so we move the Vanquisher to interact with the clan units because the clan units are actually somewhat cut off. And this sinking is mostly capable of being done because we also kept the Cicada way back behind in the initiative track. And as it does sit there, it eventually gets moved and they respond in kind, moving the two Beagle tanks and the Drillson out there to take care of it, as well as a wasp is out there up by the rocky outcropping trying to engage the cicada or at least counter it. They can't allow the cicada to just move around unopposed up there as it's causing quite a bit of concerns for the assault units. Which this is a great position to be in in Battletech because they're overcommitting an amount of forces to something that isn't necessarily as much of a threat as they think it is. 
A lot of chancy shots are taken on this turn, but ends up not a whole lot really connects home, or at least nothing terribly useful. But the feint is so far working, we have isolated the coalition assaults on the other side of the hill, and that is working out fantastically for the word of Blake. In the air war above, the initiative track once again plays foully for the word of Blake, as we end up sinking the say blitzes, letting them speed past uh, at a blitzing speed, and jinking, setting themselves up for a pass on the next turn. And as we sink them, they end up having to move both of the Tarian fighters forward. The Shiva's engaged, they're going to do a head-on pass with them, and the Tarians just manage to get one of them in such a position so he can get a firing arc. It's a long shot, he makes it, tags with an AC 20 hits the Shiva. Shiva mostly absorbs it, gets his threshold roll, crits, and tags the fuel tank. It does not explode, but one random hit manages to take the Shiva right out of the game. The two Tarian fighters, however, take it absolutely in the worst possible way, getting crit after crit after crit. I do believe one of them had six crits in just this one turn. None of them were life-threatening in any sort of way. But we're not going to let that get us down. The Tarian fighters have been turned into Swiss cheese. They have the armor capabilities of a cheese grater. And that's... That's okay for now. Maybe next turn. But we really needed that airstrike. This would have been maybe the turn to do it. They still got a lot of opportunity fire, so we might have been able to do it the next turn. We're using fighters on map sheets rules whenever they do the integration with the table, or at least we're going to keep trying to do that from here on out because it's kind of thematic and it's a little bit more interesting. It creates a, a strange barrier in this particular map because the way we use the sheet, this would actually be like six map sheets or something like that. So it's there's a kind of a, a dilation effect whenever they enter the actual combat field. It's one hex on the aerospace map, but on the map here, it's, it's much, much larger. So once again, we have separated out the coalition forces to some degree, and they are trying to respond. The wasp diverts, realizing that the cicada is actually not that much of a threat, and starts moving down. We start moving the mercenary support for the word of Blake up to the hill to try to counter and slow down the assault mechs that are going to be coming through that pass, while the cicada is going to have to deal with all those light tanks that it can. And just as we think that they're going to engage them, they don't. This, the light tanks actually completely ignore the cicada, leaving the cicada to do more or less whatever it wants. We begin moving the Vanquisher earlier in our initiative track now, because now his moves and the direction he moves in is actually no longer as relevant. And this should be something you should pay very close attention to in your own games, that assault mechs don't tend to have very important moves. As a matter of fact, the last turn was, was kind of an exception to the rule. And here we are, actually, at a very, very sensitive turn. We actually are, with the Vanquisher, about 15 hexes away from any target that it can see. The clan player, Vatbird, was actually very smart. He moved the Mad Cat. He was just fast enough to get up behind the building so he couldn't see. But at 15 hexes, I can't... It's, it's 16 hexes, literally 16 hexes. The Vanquisher cannot tag the Mad Cat in the back with that C3 network. That would have been brutal. And I did not realize it. I just did not. Especially since we moved him earlier in the initiative track, I could have changed it when I realized that the Mad Cat just stopped. Because he's going to take in a load off on that Malak that happened to get real fresh right in front of him. Just as we do, the infantry have actually dismounted on all of those wonderful Word of Blake machines. But this might not have been the turn to do it. When I realized that the Mad Cat stopped, it probably would have been advantageous to leave the infantry on the Malak just to serve as kind of a, a living meat shield. When we realize that the Cicada has actually got nothing else to do and we, the hover tanks have just blitzed by and now it's pro providing an issue for some of our slower units, we go ahead and move the Cicada back. We're going to go ahead and try to chase down some of those Beagle tanks, which I have to admit, the Beagle tank actually looks awful in the Iron Wind mod models pictures on, the, on their website, but actually, the model's actually pretty kick-ass. Uh, in person, it looks really good. It's not what I can say for all their models. Case in point, the Vanquisher. I mean, I'm not that 
I wasn't that impressed with it in any of its forms, but I think I did an okay job with that kit bash. It's got the arms from the Kraken D, or one of the Krakens. The Krakens with the Ultra Auto Cannons. And I think it, it really matches it. It makes it look really, really friggin' awesome. And the design is actually really cool. It's a, it's kind of an odd late generation zombie, which you don't you don't see that often. And as they were able to sink the initiative on that Mad Cat and make him stop, he opens up on the Malak and completely rips it open, giving it a hip and a leg hit, causing it to fall over and absolutely decimates the poor thing. It's it's uh, moving at a 3-5 right now. That's a death sentence for a light mech like that. So it's the end of the turn. The Drillsons and the Beagle Tanks are now threatening the rear lines of the Word of Blake forces. It's kind of a foo paw that we should have saw it coming. It would be nice if we had some pulse boats back there to take care of it. Drillson on the other side even manages to get into the rear arc of the Prada, but doesn't manage to do any kind of damage to it. And it's going to bug out because we just dropped the infantry, and that's kind of an anathema to a hover tank. And our forward recon units are hitting it on the nose because we did not anticipate the distance in which the Vanquisher could fire. Again, it's one of those catch-22s. The Vanquisher was an assault mech with few unit, few moves that it was actually important for it to make, so we synced it back and it, bite it, it bit us in the ass. So there's always an exception to the rule when I'm giving advice because my advice is almost universally bad. Once again, in the air war, the... Initiative track doesn't quite screw us quite as much as we have another unit to sink against the initiative track as the Shiva bugs out under forced withdrawal. Tarian fighter actually had a heat issue in the previous turn, resolved it, went into random movement, and as the blood is in the water, the Shiva flares its engine, slow down, and just starts opening up on it. With four large pulse lasers and AC-20 SRM, we just open that thing up, and despite having like a dozen control rolls, and presumably installing a few new skylights, the fighter is still in the air, losing only like three altitudes. Oh my gosh, what do I need to do to take this thing down? Meanwhile, on the other side of the board, the interceptors start tangling with the other Tarian fighter that decided to go back and engage them in a two-on-one fight for a few turns, or at least they're trying just to buy time, and that's all they really can do. That's a wise move from their perspective. And they manage to get one shot. One shot lands on one of the Sadelitzes, a medium laser. It thresholds, tags the engine, and causes it to go into forced withdrawal. We're now 2v2 on the field. Where did I go wrong here? We managed to tag the other fighter quite a few times, but we do not put it down. Okay, we are way past due. As a matter of fact, my buddy Mark starts hinting pretty strongly that we need air support, or at least we needed air support that turned before. This turn would be great too, but I cannot provide it. If I turn any of those fighters away from those fully functional Tarians, they are going to get ripped up when they do the ground strike. Because doing a ground strike in a contested airspace is a lot like going prone and shutting off your engine. It's, it's nasty. So we're making two. Malak takes the first turn, gets up, falls over several times, and manages to run and sit in the own hex it's in with the Mad Cat sitting there just ear to ear grinning. Again, we sink the Vanquisher as well, moving it up early in the initiative track up behind the building. We're trying to narrow our our opportunity fire because now we have to at least force that Mad Cat out into the open or we start engaging the Inner Sphere Lance on the north that we were hoping to engage at a later point in time, but we're now having to engage a lot sooner and we're probably going to have to engage them with the clan lands at the same time. The time that we bought diverting and separating the units has now been lost. Clan units begin moving forward again. It appears that the Mad Cat was not satisfied with destroying the Malak and makes a wiser move for the Coalition and just ignores them and begins moving forward because our heavier units are now with out a doubt, not for want of targets, and if we give them a couple more things to think about, the Coalition can actually make a, a very, very equitable press against our position. Because Charlie's in the wire, Charlie's in the wire, there's, there's hover tags everywhere! And we're really paying for it now because we synced, they, they, they got 
something like 12,000 BV on the field to slightly less for us. They're maybe at 13,000 BV to our 10,000 because we sinked a lot more into the air war. And those poor fighters are not only getting tied up fighting those irrepressible Tarian fighters, but now we just can't get them to the field to do anything. And a lot of them have turned around and ran away. I, that Shiva wasn't cheap. And the Coalition's actually making a lot of really smart moves. At this point, the C3 Lance that the Word of Blake is using is actually completely useless. As all the targets that the racks on that Vanquisher could have been brought to bear, he doesn't have line of sight to, so he's having to fire over the muzzles at the Inner Sphere Lance on the other side. Or at least, he's going to choose a better target. He's going to take on, he's going to flip the guns, turn around, and fire at the Beagle behind him or I do believe he fires at the drills in, and he just opens up on that thing, hitting round after round after round. It doesn't take much, and a couple of them hit the skirt, causes it to go immobile, crew will abandon. Victory for the word of Blake, because we've only lost a uh, heavy fighter, a light fighter, uh, everything else has gotten damaged, and at least we got a dead hover tank to show for it. Back to the air war, the word of Blake wins big, as the Tarians lose initiative, pretty consecutive. Sadlitz swings behind the Tarian fighter, opens up with its guns, 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 and rips it up, critting it twice, causing the gear to actually get damaged, which is going to be a problem later on. Shiva swings around, has to make a control roll because the other Tarian fighter is jinking, diving, dodging, doing everything it can to stay out of arc. Shiva just has to make a control roll to do a split S and fails it. The turn we had to cripple and destroy that thing, and he screws up a 4-up control roll. To quote Han Solo at this point, it, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. So the ground units are now engaged. Things are bad, my buddy Mark says. We need air support. And he is not subtle about it at all. I can agree wholeheartedly. The units are engaged. We are in broken arrow situation. We should just throw the air support onto the field, even if they are going to get shot down, because we're going to lose the game if we don't, because currently the heavier units are outnumbered, outgunned, and they're currently outmaneuvered. A good airstrike from uh, Shiva would actually do a wonder, but the only thing that's actually capable of making it to the field this turn is the Sablitz. And two little medium pulse lasers isn't going to do much anything, and it's going to get shot down. Somebody sneezes, and that thing's going to get shot down. It's a great interceptor. It is a horrible ground attack plan. So the Coalition is actually in an excellent position. They've got fast maneuvers everywhere, and we can't move anything without having something in a back arc. Ah, there's... And the initiative track starts screwing us. We, we can't really do anything about it, but eh, we do what we can. Clan gets real aggressive starts looking up new blood names as they begin moving forward, getting behind the Vanquisher, which is completely my fault. I should have saw that coming. I moved the Vanquisher earlier because I was just sinking them against the initiative track, and they take advantage of that. And I only owe this because I was distracted with the air war, trying to figure out how to save that situation. Otherwise, I wouldn't have moved the Vanquisher that far forward. That's a, that's a huge foo -pah. The rest of the mercenary word of Blake units begin taking defilade positions and trying to hull down themselves on that hill, trying to do what they can to take on the Banshee and Thug that are now opening up. The Vanquisher now has to take on two clan heavies, the Thug, the Banshee, uh, whatever light tank that decides to take a pot shot at it. Oh, this is ugly. Tyrian Fighter does manage to make an appearance on the field, as you can see it right there. But remember how I said making a ground strike in a contested airspace is a bad idea? Well, I'm not going to let this insult go untarnished. I am going to make him pay for that. 
But not before the Clan Heavies absolutely devastate the Vanquisher. Two heavy large lasers is nothing to sneeze at. Two heavy large lasers from two separate mechs is something to be concerned about. And they rip open the back torso on the Vanquisher, clearing off almost all the armor coring the left torso and then also causing crits into the center torso they get a crit on the ammo it blows up and then they get a crit on the case i'm really glad it wasn't the other way around we were playing it that if the case was damaged it would blow up everything else i'm actually i'm not terribly certain if that's how it works but it would have been funny and thank goodness that's not what happened lightning fighter however as you can see, had a beeline on for that Malak, just in case the Beagle tanks didn't kill the Malak in the turn prior. But the Beagle tanks take the leg off because it's going to cause the pilot to eject. Hoorah. And speaking of ejections, the Shiva's not going to let that go. From straight off the board, it starts stacking him from the aerospace maps and completely devastates it. Hitting it over and over again with various large pulse lasers and the AC-20, and it just cores the thing completely. And since we were still pressed for time, we're playing on Sundays. We, then the store's closing earlier on Sundays, we ended up taking a look at the field and calling it. It was a tactical win for the coalition forces because we realized that we might be able to keep fighting, but we were just fighting with a foot in the bucket. One of the Shivas was still flying and operational and could have came down on the field to kill something, but it's been our experience that an air, su air support tends to get one good pass, cripple something, and usually gets crippled in return, so we weren't really going to press that. So it's a tactical win for the Coalition. Uh, you win some, you lose some. Or since I got the camera on, I lose most of them, which is surprising. I actually look back and I actually win uh, some of my Battletech games, so this is better than average. But not this one, obviously. Even though we we fought a good air war and we won it we eventually killed everything we we lost the war he tied everything up for way way too long we hadn't went ahead and even though we didn't have the time to directly kill him go ahead and roll to see if that tarian fighter that was still flying around would have made it back home to land since he had gear damage and no he ended up blowing himself into a bunch of tarmac confetti so that's uh, you know it's a moral win this has been an Ouchie's Bat Rep, and thanks for watching. Three, uh, We're going to open up with the uh, five, infantry. Right. Well, actually, three. We're going to three, open up the uh, three, S4s. Four, five, because they're four, five, six, seven. Five, five six, six. Hitting on sixes. Five, six, six seven. seven. That's right. Okay, nine. son. This is super important. I need you to take these two dice and rub all your newbie luck onto this. You need a six plus. Roll the dice. <laughs> That's awesome. That's good. That's very good. He's doing better than you.